Hello and good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Ranjit Sa, infectious disease expert and as well as a clinical research degree from the Harvard Medical School. Today I'm going to continue our previous revision section of this USMLE Step 1 2021 Microbiology where we have discussing about this bacteria like um, Klebsiella in the previous lecture. Now we will be discussing about this Campylobacter jejuni. Actually a Campylobacter jejuni is responsible for uh, a bloody diarrhea that proceed to that leads to a complication known as the gulen barre syndrome, GBS, which is a neurological and devastating complication. Because of that, this organism has got importance. Actually, you can say about 40% of the USA gulen barre syndrome are due to this trigger by this Campylobacter jejuni bacteria. So it makes, makes it a high yield point of view. It has some mechanism by which uh, it's like a, when you develop rheumatic heart disease, there is a cross reactivity. This is due to M protein antibody is formed against the streptococcus pyogens and uh, then attacks our own heart due to a cross reactivity. Similar mechanism, mechanism is over here where this bacteria, our antibody form the bacteria uh, antibody against this bacterial component and same component, same antibody will react with our neuronal tissue and they will damage that neuronal sheath and then develop our gulen barre syndrome. So let's go through the books. So this is the gram negative. <clears throat> we know that it is a comma or yes shift with the polar flagella. They are oxidase negative, but grows at 42 degrees Celsius. Campylobacter likes the hot campfire. So the main important, if you remember the previous, uh, if you remember the previous one, I will come to that. Uh, let me show you over here. So this is, uh, if you remember, our gram negative bacteria classification then where we have discussed about this this gram negative pink rods where we are the curve rods okay and this curve rod were oxidase positive and there were three organisms that is the campylobacter vibrio cholerae and a helicobacter pylori these three bacteria which we can these all are curved bacteria among them they can be differentiated by like they all are oxidase positive they are gram negative they are crop rods but the important point is campylobacter jejuni grow at 42 degrees celsius where other bacteria doesn't but biblio quality it was growth in alkaline environment campylobacter and Helico helicobacter doesn't whereas helicobacter produce rapid urea stress by which we can differentiate from the campylobacter and biblio quality so in this way one bacteria from another can was differentiated we are talking about the campylobacter jejuni which is a gram negative carb brown oxidase positive and grows at 42 degrees celsius let's go over there so hope you remember that tree that tree is actually very important to make your information okay now comes to here comes to our point so it is a gram negative comma or yes shift with flora flow polar flagella they are oxidase positive and important point that differentiate from other crop gram negative rods are they grows at 42 degrees celsius so we can remember as campylobacter like hot campfire they can grow in the hot temperature they can grow in 42 degrees celsius where other bacteria doesn't major cause of bloody diarrhea especially in the children they are our fecal oral transmission through the person to person contact or via ingestion of the undercooked contaminated pottery or meat so it will cause bloody diarrhea to the mainly especially to the children and the contamination source are fecal oral transmission mainly they can transmit from person to person as well also via ingestion of the undercooked contaminated pottery or meat or unpasteurized milk so we have person to person can be tra transmitted it can be transmitted by ingestion of the contaminated undercooked contaminated pottery or meat on pasteurized milk these are the source of contamination from where they, we can get this infection contact with infected animals example dog cat pe pigs is also a risk factor so these are the we, we even contact with the infected animal can also be a risk factor and we'll get the disease common antecedent to gulen barre syndrome and reactive arthritis which makes it important so before development of this gulen barre syndrome or say reactive arthritis patient will develop this campylobacter jejuni infection or say if a patient develop campylobacter jejuni infection after after that post infection may they lead to the gulen barre syndrome and reactive arthritis okay let me take you to the some of the book and then we'll come over here let's to the go to the Kaplan book where we can uh, see this campylobacter jejuni that in normally patient with inflammatory diarrhea there are gram, ne gram negative carb rods microarephalic oxidase positive and grow at 
42 degrees Celsius. These are the important point to identify, pinpoint the diagnosis to Campylobacter jejuni. So this is main thing you have to remember is growth at 42 degrees Celsius and obviously they are oxidase positive and gram negative. So Campylobacter, Campylobacter jejuni a distinguished feature are gram negative rods with polar flagella. They have the gull wings. Let me show you the picture of gull wings actually. If you see, if you see this organism, see this, this, this part actually. It will actually appear as the wing, so it's like wing, so girl's wings. So it's a girl's wing appearance. Wing, you can see like a bird wing, so it is called girl's wing appearance. Okay, oxidase positive, microaerophilic grows at 42 degree um, campi or skiro agar. So this is the selective media that is required for the growth of this organism, and that orga that um, media is known as the campi or skiro agar. So, it was the scientists by which we give their name. This is the special media that is selective media for the, this Campylobacter zeuxini bacterial growth. Reservoir, they are intestinal tract of the human, cattle, sheep, dog, cats and poultry. They all we can found in the human tract, in the intestinal tract of the humans, cattle, sheep, dog, cats and as well as the poultry as well. Transmission, you know, fecal oral transmission. The, Sikuru agar primarily from the pottery. So the main uh, thing is that you need to also understand about this agar as well. Pathogenesis, the low infection dose, even few as a 500 can cause the disease. Invade the mucosa of the colon, destroy the mucosal surfaces, blood and plus, uh, sorry, blood and pus in the stool, inflammatory diarrhea, rarely penetrates to cause septicemia. So the pathogenesis, when you ingest, it goes into the intestine, in the intestine, that will invade the mucosal mainly they invade the mucosa of the colon, destroy the mucosal surfaces, so blood and comes out, so blood vessel get exposed, blood comes out along with there will be the inflammation, so pus in the stool, so it is an inflammatory diarrhea, and, but it doesn't cause you the septicemia, it doesn't go into the systemic circulation and lead to septicemia. You know the image, it is a girl wings, so it is like wing of a bird appearance, that make its a characteristic feature, okay. The disease it is causing is gastroenteritis. We know it will cause the bloody diarrhea. Common cause of infectious diarrhea worldwide. In US, Campylobacter enteritis is more common than the Salmonella and Sigella. Salmonella and Sigella is very common in my country, in Nepal. But if you talk about this uh, camp, USA, Campylobacter enteritis is more common than Salmonella and Sigella. It leads to a 10 stool per day, maybe frankly bloody. So there will be the symptom, there will be abdominal pain, fever, malaise, nausea and vomiting, generate self, generally self-limiting in through to five days, but may last longer. The major important thing is its complication. And the complication is gulen barre syndrome. Why develop the gulen barre syndrome? Because 30% of the GV, GVS, uh, that gulen barre syndrome in US serotype O119, antigenic cross-reactive between the Campylobacter oligosaccharides and glycosphingolipids on neural tissue. Let me show you. The picture you can see over here this is your campylobacter jejuni in campylobacter jejuni there is the campylobacter oligosaccharides in their uh, uh, cell wall so our our body our human body will form antibody against it this antibody will mimic the similar antigenic structure of that your neuronal tissue and neuronal spingo spin glycospingolipids this is very important you have to remember campylobacter oligosaccharides is similar to that glycospingolipids on neuronal tissue so it's campylobacter oligosaccharides is similar to that this spingo glycospingolipids on your neuronal tissue so the antibody formed against the clostridium sorry this campylobacter jejuni will go and react to this neuronal tissue that is the glycospingolipase and damage that and after damaging there will be antigen antibody reaction complement will activation there will damage of your tissue and now slowly progressively you will develop the ascending paralysis this is gulen virus syndrome you will have the feature where there will be the ascending paralysis when the paralysis start from the toes and goes apart and when it reaches to the respiratory tract if your respiratory muscle and if you are not able to uh, ventilate or give treatment properly the patient will die so you hope understand this cross reactivity. This is the Campylobacter jejuni, which has this oligosaccharides, the antibody formed by our body. After the clearing of this organism, this antibody will go and attack the similar structure, similar antigenic structure in the neuronal tissue, which is known as the glycosphingolipids of our own neural tissue and damage our neural tissue. So in this way, this Campylobacter oligosaccharides and 
glycosphingolipids on the neural tissue will cross react and there will be damage of this our neural tissue and will develop mullen barre syndrome even in hla b27 patient they will develop the reactive arthritis talking about the diagnosis diagnosis is very easy this is a gram negative rods they can be easily grown at 42 degrees celsius you need a special media which is known as the campylobacter or scleroder media scleroder agar <coughs> we culture on that and then on, we grow the organism then we can strain we can in strain we will find this gram negative rods they will have their characteristics appearance gulf wings appearance that is cobra or yes bacteria and then further we can even go for molecular diagnostic as well treatment must support mostly support supportive fluid and electrolyte replacement erythromycin fluorochloroquinones can be given they are usually resistant to the penicillin so you hope you have understood about this campylobacter this is an important cause of diarrhea in us so campylobacter meaning core bacteria a genus of gram negative bacteria campylobacter typically appears comma or yeast and motile some campylobacter species can infect humans some can cause campylobacter a diarrheal disease in the human okay <clears throat> we have let's let's see the contamination shown shown by the picture wise so this com campylobacter jejuni in adult it can cause 500 cell more than can cause damage your intestinal epithelial cell in children it required greater than 500 cell the source of contamination can be contaminated water contaminated unpasteurized milk contaminated meat contaminated poultry 6 to 80 percent of the infection is this poultry infection colostrum jejuni 10 to 8 colony forming units will can found in this poultry infection so the, all these things, water, contaminated pasteurized milk, contaminated milk, contaminated poultry, this all will lead to your transmission to the human. After transmission, they will develop the symptom, initially will be watery diarrhea, then they will convert into bloody diarrhea, there will be the inflammation, fever, vomiting, this all are will the symptoms develop in this patient. I have already as explained about the structure, this wing is characteristic wing appearance, gull wings appearance is a characteristic finding of this campylobacter. You can see this uh, causing invasive diarrhea, they invade in your intestinal epithelial cell, then they, they, they damage it and cause the exposure. They first colonize in the mucosal surface, invade it, then destroy it and blood get exposed and their blood comes out in your stool. And the complication is golden body syndrome. The golden body syndrome is developed due to the antibody formed against this, crust, this campylobacter jejuni oligosaccharide where this antibody after clearing of this organism goes and attack to our neuronal that is uh, glycosphingol lipids and the, in this way this neuronal tissue will get damaged and once the neural tissue is get damaged now you will develop this gulen berry syndrome so this makes a, actually an important organism this makes it a high yield and you need to understand it if you have any question please comment link below i'll try to answer as soon as possible thank you